The name Louise Sauvage is synonymous with the Paralympics and the nine-time gold medalist had the honour of leading the Australian team into the opening ceremony. Well, Louise, you've been bestowed with so many honours in your career. What was it like walking out with the flag tonight? It was unbelievable. It was great. It's such a buzz, you know. It was really weird because I'm out there by myself and I'm just kind of looking back at the team. It was just awesome. Really. You've had, you had such a great time in Sydney. Obviously, lighting the cauldron would have been pretty special. Yeah. Well, being here and knowing that this is the last time you're going to be at a Paralympics as a competitor, what's this like for you? Um, it's great. I mean, just having the honour of carrying the flag out was just amazing. and. You know, really topping off my career, it's just, you know, you can't really ask for much more. <laughs> Is it hard for you to concentrate on the events that you've got coming up with everything else that's been going on? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I'm here to compete and that's number one priority. So, yeah, I'm more focused on that than anything. Today, Louise Savage celebrates her 31st birthday and over the coming days, the curtain will come down on her stellar career. Savage away a little slowly in six. Now she's starting to reel them in, gets past Wetterstrom beside her in five. And look at Savage go, she was most impressive in the heats, fastest qualifier, and she's waltzing away with this. Gold medal for Australia coming up as she hits the line in 17.36. Well, she's not beating the uh, world record, but that's a Paralympic record for Louise Savage. She got away slowly, but didn't she reel them in quickly? The Barcelona Paralympics, 1992, and Louise Savage claimed her first gold medal. I'm off to a good, hopefully I can continue <laughs> going really well. The then 19-year-old couldn't have imagined just how successful she was going to be. For almost 15 years, Savage has carried the expectations of being an ambassador, role model and trailblazer for athletes with a disability. She has claimed nine Paralympic gold medals, two Olympic demonstration golds, two Boston marathons, a swag of world championship titles and been named World Sports Person of the Year with a disability. It's been a long road, but it's all set to come to an end. Having experience and knowledge, say what I've got, is I think it's really important. Um, I think I can take a lot more into a race or a lot more into a competition than some of the other guys who are perhaps this is their first Paralympic Games or first international competition. Um, but you know, you only get that from being around for a long time. So um, you know, that's just the way it is. But but yeah, I, I think my experience will help me a lot. Savage will focus on the 400 and 800 metre events in Athens, where she hopes to regain her 800 title from Canada's Chantelle petit clerc who took the gold in Sydney. Savage may not get her. Petty Clerk is going to win. This will be a major upset. Petty Clerk of Canada gold. 154.42. Louise Savage the silver. The first time she's been beaten on the track in eight years. Louise Savage was born with a severe spinal disability and began swimming at the age of three as part of her therapy. She got a taste for speed by the time she was eight with her first racing chair and hasn't slowed down since winning her first world title in 1990. The good news is Savage's involvement in the sport will not come to an end with her retirement. I really want to be in Beijing in one way or another, whether I'm a, a team member in some other capacity or whether I'm part of um, some other role to do with the team. You know, I just really want to be there. I think Beijing will be great and you know, I'd really like to still be involved in my chosen sport. And the sport is already in good hands, with Savage's successor, Eliza Stankovic, no longer a protégé, but a major rival in Savage's quest for further gold in Athens.